So I want to talk about the importance of the bow arm and the string levels. So the the action is this, which I kind of call the chicken wing because once I say chicken wing to my younger students, they immediately understand. So sometimes it's hard for um, students to understand which part of the body they're moving. So if I tell them to move their elbow, sometimes they move their wrists and it's weird, but it happens. So um, even with adults, sometimes we're not really um, self-aware. So it's important to um, be able to distinguish, you know, the different parts of your arm and how they're working. So, um, so if you think about a chicken wing, it kind of, you know, doing, doing like this, okay? So notice that the hinge is the shoulder, um, this this area, that's where all the movement is coming from. And the main um, parts that are actually um, moving in space is the upper arm. So you see how, how this is moving. And because it's all attached, then the rest of the arm moves. But I don't really have to move my hand to, to move um, my upper arm. Okay, so this is important too, because sometimes you'll have a student who um, will you know, raise their arm, but then their hand will stay in the same spot. So uh, let's say they're playing something and they keep hitting the A string. They're on the D string, but they're hitting the A string. And you tell them to raise their elbow, and then they're still hitting the A string. So, um, so knowing you know, which parts of your arm are moving. This is all a really important topic because um, let's say you want to be learning the um, Bach uh, solo sonatas and partitas. There are a lot of chords in there, triple stops, quadruple stops, and that most of that work has to be done with, with this that I'm talking about over here. So it's, it's totally a string level thing. There are always exceptions to everything, but uh, most of the time it's going to be done this way. All right, so um, I will um, uh, upload later installments of that. I'm talking about string crossing, especially in solo Bach, because that comes up a lot. But for today, I'd like to kind of um, show you the differences between the string levels um, using the different parts of my arms. So um, I have a few students right now who are new students who came to me from another teacher. And so um, they have a little bit of a hard time with uh, knowing where to put their their upper arm and their elbow so um so for example if i'm on the e string right you can see my arm here and then sometimes um they'll go to the a string without lifting the elbow so now you can see that my bow is making a, a straight line this way but my arm is making a straight line that way and usually the most optimal place to be is when they're matching so you know you can put like a book a book here and you see how this line and this line are in the same um, angle all right we don't want to have this one going this way see how my my bow is now going up that way and then my arm is going out that way okay so most of the time you want it to be about matching um, of course, there are always exceptions. There are a lot of exceptions, but say if you want to do a nice spiccato, right? Usually it works really well when these two lines are matching. You can see if I drop it, I can do it, but um, now other parts of my arm have to work. So uh, in this way, I, I'm kind of just swinging back and forth and nice and easy. And I can kind of do this all day because I'm, I'm finding the right balance here. string level here. So if I went to the D, G string like that, it's hard to find that, that balance and it's not even anymore. I could make it even, I can work on it and see I can do it, but it doesn't mean that it's the most effective and efficient way. So, so here's my D string level and then see I go to my G string level, right? So it's not getting interrupted because all of my large muscle groups are um, are helping out and so it's trying to create the same environment to create the same type of bounce and once once my large muscle groups change formation now it's not showing uh, it's not providing the same environment I um, hope that makes sense so 
going back to the E string, so some of my students have, um, like, they'll play on the A string level here, and then they'll go to the G, and they won't move their elbow up. You know, some of them is because they're, they're shy. For some reason, they're, they're shy to do this. But, um, so, making sure on the G string, you go up like that. If you're going to stay there for a while, you want a really nice, rich sound. In. You definitely want your... Um, upper arm in the right place and your elbow height to be just so okay now if you're just gonna go there for for a short while then we have to incorporate the other ways that we change levels but I'm gonna hold on to that we're gonna do that in just a minute same problem happens when let's say the kids are on the A string here and then they go to the E string and then they haven't dropped their their large muscle group over here they haven't moved it Okay, so that's another issue that I run into. So both of these issues are pretty um, common. I'd say about 30% of um, intermediate students do this. Even it, if you don't correct it, it will even go into the more um, like lower advanced stages too. So if you're a teacher, you want to watch out for that and give them some exercises that really utilize that. So the, the problem of going to the G without bringing their elbow up and also the problem of going to the E string without dropping their elbow and then often they kind of want to play like this with the super high you know, elbow even on the E string right so this is a problem we, we definitely want to encourage uh, using this joint over here and dropping the upper arm so sometimes I if they can't do that then you do drop this part is usually no problem. Drop. So it's important to train the muscles to have the correct timing. So the, the drop of the um, arm is actually right before the bow actually starts to move on the down bow or the up bow. That way you create a clean string crossing. So timing is everything. So it's best to put that pause in there and have them drop the arm um, before. All right, and then um, to speed up that whole sequence is really not a problem later on. Okay, now we're going to talk about the other ways to change string levels. So that is, uh, we talked about the hinge from here. Now the hinge has moved to here. So do you see how I'm keeping this string? I'm going to hold on to this so you can see. Um, if you want right now, you can pause and then go to like a tabletop or something, or if you have an arm rest or something like that just just uh, stabilize your elbow you can just set it on top of the table and then what you want to do is act like you're got, about to go to the d string or something or g string and then come back okay so this is like i would say this is an a string level here you see how this is staying absolutely still and i'm going to go up and get the d string and i might play two notes here bum 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 like that Right, so you can see. Um, this is sometimes really tricky if a student hasn't really realized they're doing it or um, you're trying to do it on command, then it's difficult. Um, so basically, you can also get a wall here. You can just lean up against the wall. Make sure you're not doing anything funny with your posture, but just walk up to it with your feet until you run into it. And then you can practice that passage. You know, um, there's a lot of passages where we have a two string crossing. So we're going to go like. So right here is not moving at all. It might be shaking a little bit because it's a result of what's happening with my forearm. Okay. So. Same thing on the D and the A. I did a little bit of wrist, sorry. So I'm going to try to isolate that. So it's just this whole piece is one unit. I'm trying not to wobble here. So that's also very effective when you have like a. So most of the notes are on the A string, and then there's maybe two or three notes, and then you come back, or one note. So. so that keeps this part really quiet, and this part is working the most. Um, the third way is with the wrist. So I'm going to pull this up so you can see. So then again, I'm going to stabilize my wrist. You can set your arm down, your forearm down on a tabletop. 
And then right here, then you can do a string crossing with your wrist. This is great too. So usually, I, I think you saw by accident, I do a combination of um, hinging from the elbow and the wrist sometimes. And sometimes I'm doing, you know, um, upper arm, and then I'm doing a little bit of wrist, and then upper arm and wrist. This, there's a lot of this in, in Bach and, and um, uh, like 16 note passages in uh, Baroque music. So. Um, so we're gonna go from here. Usually I try to stay on the on the lower side and then I reach up. Same thing with my elbow. When I noticed I was on the A level and then I came up, right? And then with my wrist, now I'm on the A level and my wrist is gonna come up. This feels a little weird. It feels like kind of like you're twisting here. But, right, so I think you can see that I'm not moving this at all. It's like this. And you can do it the other way. Alright, so that works um, whether you're slurring or not, um, whatnot. It, it's, you, you want to really know and understand the three ways that you can change levels. And then that way you're using the large muscle groups when um, you're going to stay a while, you're going to use the uh, the from hinging from the elbow when you have maybe like a little bit of a combination and then you're gonna use wrist in um, other quick passages where maybe you only have one note on the other string and you're gonna alternate back and forth so I'll um, try those exercises out just you know just work on that you can even just do it without your instrument at all and just like act like you're mixing something I don't know like you're turning a crank just hold on to that and same here act like you're you're holding a bow hold a little bit and then you're kind of turning a crank here and that should help help out all right good luck <laughs>